There is a brand new player in the launch monitor game. I just received the new Envisage N1 overhead launch monitor unit, which is the debut product for this brand new company and is the most affordable overhead launch monitor unit available today. As of filming this video, it's currently priced at under $5,000, which is completely insane considering it features two ultra high speed cameras capable of 2000 frames per second. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that my personal launch monitor is the Foresight GC3, but overhead launch monitors are a great option for people who have both righties and lefties used in their space, as it doesn't require you to move the launch monitor from side to side, and being ceiling mounted keeps it out of the way from damage and leaves you with a nice clean hitting surface. Now, being a budget friendly unit, it does require the use of its own specialty mark golf balls, but they do include a dozen of those with the purchase of the unit. It also doesn't have its own proprietary software, but the great news is, is it has full integration with E6 Connect and my personal favorite, GS Pro. This unit is so new to the market, there's not a whole lot of information on it out there. Luckily for me, the guys at Carl's Place, who are one of the first companies to feature this unit for sale on their website, reached out to me and just so happened to have a couple demo units and were nice enough to send me one to test out. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step guide showing you exactly how to set up and install this unit, and then I'm gonna try it out on GS Pro and let you know what I think. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, it really helps the channel grow. Links to this unit will be down in the descriptions down below, as well as every product I use in my own personal setup. So let's get this thing installed so we can test it out, and thank you guys for watching. All right, we're gonna to wanna to start by unboxing our new Envisage N1 unit. It's a really light and simple design. It's got two connectors on the back and a power switch. And you're gonna to wanna to leave this protective film in place until after the install so you don't damage anything. You're gonna get a power cable, an ethernet cord, quick start guide, a USB to ethernet adapter, six mounting screws, a bubble level for mounting it, and then you'll get the calibration board and finally a dozen of their specialty mark golf balls. Now for the mounting location, you're going to need between 9 and 10 feet above the hitting surface and then you want your hitting area to be about 2 feet in front of the unit. Luckily for me, that just so happens to be exactly where my old projector unit is mounted. I just upgraded to a new BenQ projector, so my old Optima projector is still there as I've been wanting to do some testing side by side, and it is in the perfect location. I just have to make some quick modifications to get it in place. So I'm just gonna remove my old projector and then modify the mount so I can fall between those guidelines of nine and 10 feet. This was a nice bonus as I'm only putting this unit up temporarily to test it out, and I had sloped ceiling, so I was kind of unsure on how I was going to do it, but this seems to be a great option. Now you want to grab your new Envisage unit and remove the two screws that hold on the mounting plate to the back of the unit. You're just going to pull those screws out and then slide it over and it will release the mounting frame from the unit. Now I'm just going to set the unit to the side and grab the projector mounting plate. I've already unmounted my projector and as you can see this uh, plate is very thick gauge steel so I'm not too worried about only using two screws for this process. Obviously, if you have flat ceilings, you're gonna to want to secure the plate to your ceiling with all six supplied screws in the kit. But again, for my case, this is gonna work out great and it'll give me a nice option to test it out. Carl's Place also offers a mount that mounts to your enclosure frame. So I'll put a link to that down in the description below if that's an option for your case. Now I can just take the assembly and hook it into my projector mounting frame. You wanna make sure that the two holes with the screws that retain the envisage to the mount are facing towards the hitting area and away from the screen. And then just use the supplied bubble mount in the envisage packaging and place it on top of the mounting plate and tighten everything down, making sure that it is completely level, in which case you can hang your brand new envisage unit. Just go ahead and secure it in the back slots and then slide and lock it into place and replace those two screws that we moved in the steps prior. Now we just need to hook up the supplied power cable and ethernet cable. The power cable just pushes into place and then screws to lock down and the ethernet cable just simply plugs into the port right next to the unit. Then we can flip the power switch to the on position and remove the plastic film. Now that we have our Envisage unit mounted securely into place, we can move on to hooking up the other end of the ethernet cable into the computer. Grab your USB 3.0 to Ethernet adapter located in your Envisage kit and hook that into a 3.0 USB input on your computer. It'll be marked with a blue color. There were two adapters in the box, I'm not sure why, but you only need one. Then grab the other end of your Ethernet cable coming from your Envisage and plug it into the USB adapter. Now that the Envisage unit is fully mounted, connected to power, and hooked to the PC, we can move forward to the software installation and calibration. 
you're gonna to wanna to head over to the Envisage website. I'll leave a link to it down below and then hit support on the options above. Click on the N1 Launch Monitor Resources option and then you'll see at the top of this page to download the latest N1 software. Go ahead and click on this icon to download the software. You may get a pop-up like this one depending on your Windows settings, but go ahead and just click the option to download the file. Head over to your downloads folder and right click on the PIO packet and run as administrator. You might get a pop up like this one. Just go ahead and hit more info and run anyway. Once you're presented with the welcome screen, go ahead and hit next. You'll then be presented with two install options. I stuck with complete. So then you'll hit next from there and then hit install. Once that's complete, go ahead and hit finish and select the option to restart your computer. Once your computer reboots, you'll see the two Envisage apps installed on your desktop. Just double click on the N1 calibration app. Once that opens up, go ahead and select calibration. I'm also going to use the rotate option so it's in the same orientation as I see it, which will make placing the calibration board much easier. And then the zoom out option so I can see the whole area. The rotate and zoom options don't affect how the Envisage operates, it's strictly just for the setup process. Now you're going to want to grab your calibration board and place it in the area. You'll see a note on the calibration board that says screen. That's going to obviously face your screen and you want to place it so that blue line is parallel with the green line. Once it's correctly in place, go ahead and hit the calibrate option. It'll run through its process. And when you're presented with this pop-up, make sure right is selected and hit OK. You'll be presented with a pop-up that says the calibration is successful. Go ahead and hit OK. Now you can remove the calibration board and grab one of the balls that came with your Envisage and place it in the hitting area. Then we can select shot test above so we can test if it is reading the data. You'll be presented with a pop-up asking if you're using a putter for the test. I selected no as I tested with an iron. When you see ready on the screen in green, that means you can hit your shot and you want to make sure after you hit it that you see shot information in red. This indicates that the Envisage unit is working as it should and registered the shot. Now we can simply hit save and close the calibration tool. Now we can open up the NConnect app and when brought to this screen, we're going to want to select GS Pro since that's what I'm using and hit start. Now, one of the things I would love to see in future updates is for them to change these actionable buttons like the start button and next buttons to a more actionable color like green. Being the color that they are, it almost makes it look like it's a dead button or inactive. So just having a simple color change would definitely help out. Now we want to check the box for N1 and then hit next. And now we can just select connect. Now we can go ahead and open up GS Pro. One thing to keep in mind is if you're using GS Pro, you'll be given some options for how you want to connect your launch monitor. You want to pick the open API connection method. That's how this Envisage N1 communicates with GS Pro. So make sure you select that option. When you see this GS Pro pop up, go ahead and hit play and then you'll see that open API application open. Now you'll notice in the open API app that it says not ready in red. That's because there's no ball in the hitting location. As soon as you put a ball in that spot, you'll see both the NConnect app and the open API show ready. Now we can just minimize both of those applications and start playing some golf. Okay, now that we have everything set up, I'm at GS Pro's practice range to test it out and see how it does. My first initial thought was to test it against my GC3, but unfortunately the two units were kind of having interference with one another. However, there were some instances where both shots picked up and I saw very similar spin, carry, launch angles, and club head speed. So that is a really good plus. But due to the interference, I couldn't really test them side by side like I wanted to. So we're just gonna try it out and see how it does. So you can hear the ready audible that it is ready for the shot, meaning it can see the ball. And that was a little block to the right. Definitely felt that and the unit picked it up as I would expect for that kind of swing. One thing I did notice though, is as soon as I hit that ball, it takes off on screen. That's a huge bonus to me. You wanna have the simulator be as realistic as possible and to have a ball immediately take off after you hit it is something that is a big plus. Really like that feature. One of the problems with units like the SkyTrack is they have a shot delay and I really don't like that. I wanna hit the ball and get immediate feedback. So I'm glad to see that this unit is doing that. All right, let's try to hit a big swooping hook and see if it'll pick that up. Yep, started out right and it's turning over to the left. So that's pretty awesome that it's picking that up and that type of shots. Another huge plus for it. Haven't had any misreads yet. And I did hit a few balls on it before I started this video. So we can see we have side spin, back spin, launch angle. The club speed is what I'm used to personally. And the carry number for that shot makes perfect sense. All right, now let's test it out with a really, really bad shot. Let's see if it'll pick up a shot where maybe like a shank and see if the unit captures that data. 
that was more me kind of just flaring it that way, but hey, it did what I expected it to do. Let's try a nice thin one. Right. Yep, that was thin for sure. Blocked and everything. It's looking good right now. Everything looks as I would expect it to. Um, one thing, I had a Mevo Plus before and it really struggled with soft chips and putts, so let me jump down to the green and we'll try those out. All right, for the chipping and putting, I decided to leave the range and head over to the Wynn Golf Club to test it out. That's another huge benefit with this launch monitor is the integration with GS Pro, which gives you the ability to play a bunch of different courses. So let's try a few delicate chips and see how the unit registers. Oh, go in. Yeah, looking really good so far. So nice soft chips, picking it up with no issues. All right, let's hit one more. A little too hard on that one, but again, the unit picked it up fine. So let's switch over to putting. All right, I got myself a little 13 foot putt here. So we're gonna test the unit out and see if it reads the putt. Little overpaced, that's my fault, but unit read the putt just fine. Let's try that one more time. Right in the heart. That is awesome, really good to see. Glad everything looks like it's working. So the only thing to do next is try some gameplay. All right, now that we have the Envisage N1 set up, I wanted to test it out on GS Pro software. So I have it set up on Bay Hill since the Arnold Palmer Invitational was just this last weekend. I don't know if you watched, Scotty Scheffler won that, so I thought it'd be appropriate to do it on Bay Hill. And I have a special guest standing behind the camera, my wife, Mel, who's gonna help me out with this. And we're gonna play a hole so we can make sure that, you know, everything is good. The launch monitor is working throughout, you know, well, this is gonna be short play, but obviously I wanna test this long-term, uh, but to make sure we don't run into any issues while using the software. So, got anything to say? Let's do it. <laughs> One thing to notate about Mel, she just got into golfing recently. We've had the simulator in our house for three years. She was, wasn't into golf. Not, still not sure why she let me do it in the Fairly beginning. Fairly into golf. A little bit, but didn't really play that much or I don't even think at all. Um, but that's one of the cool things about the simulator. She came around and she actually has been practicing more than I am. So hopefully she doesn't whip me up. Uh, on the channel today, but hopefully we'll find I out. I do. Well, you're first up. Actually, I'm first up. Um, let's say 154. What are you gonna hit? I'm gonna hit an eight iron. Eight iron. Hopefully right. not embarrass myself. Searching, ready. Yeah, so that's one thing like that I hope they fix is the audible thing. It'd be nice to have like some audible tones. It doesn't need to say searching. I don't know why it says that, but again, it's a, it's a new company with a pretty cool product from what I tested so far. Uh, but if they can just do an update where they get rid of the searching function and maybe just say ready or even better, a bunch of different options for like maybe a ding or a different kind of sound that just is a little more pleasing than that, that would be great. But for the price, for an overhead launch monitor, I mean, it's pretty hard to beat right now. Oh, that was a good That's strike. Good. Is it gonna be enough? Nope, short. Just barely. I forgot it doesn't take our elevation into account. Right. Only a hometown hero. Hometown hero. Then I play it, then I play at sea level and I can't, uh, that's not that much of a difference, actually. Where's Bay Hill? Bay Hill's in Orlando, Florida. Oh, oh no. she shanks it. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, sorry. You know what? I'm going to give you a mulligan. It's your first, it's your debut. A little control M action, and there you go. From me to it. you. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. That was much better. Held your finish that time. Maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe. I'm working on that. Searching. All right, Mel, you're still up. Now, if we hit shot cam, J, you can see that it's going to be, see, it's like a false front, so the dots are coming towards you. So that means if you're short, it's probably going to roll back off the green, and then it's right to left break. So that's one of the things with the Envisage is, no, it doesn't come with its own software, but it works with GS Pro, and GS Pro is one of my favorite simulation softwares. It's become a lot of people's favorites. Um, 
you know, over the past couple of years. So it's not a bad thing. It doesn't have its own because if you can use GS Pro, 250 bucks a year, you can play courses that you just saw on TV, which is awesome. Sorry, yes. go ahead. Oh, oh I went little way lady. Left. It's all right. Searching. Ready. All right, I got a little 11 ish yard bunker shot. So I actually have the uh, divot board, if you've seen on the channel, I kind of show you how to make this thing. I like it because I can hit wide open shots, just like I would in an actual bunker, without like messing my hands up. But we'll see how the Envisage reads this wide open kind of pop-up shot. Ooh, a little too much. So this is gonna be 30 feet, Mel. No. Oh, no. This software is broken. That putt <laughs> should have gone in the hole. <laughs> I mean, it looked pretty good. You'll notice, too, like when I'm going up to the ball, if you're a waggler, Search ready. Search because ready. it's overhead, like obviously it needs to see the ball when it's looking down at it. I'm sure all overhead units are like that. So that's something I have to keep into account because like if I'm walking over the ball, Search ready. it's obviously going to lose connection, but it connects pretty quick. 20 feet, downhill right to left, so it's gonna be fast. Oh, stay in, Ooh, stay, stay in, stay in so I can whoop her. Searching. Bogey, you gotta make this to tie, Mel. Make it to tie. Good luck. Right. Now I'm rooting for you. Eight, eight inches. Yeah, you don't wanna get this to the to the screen, because the screen's almost nine feet away, but these greens play faster because of the software. We're at a different elevation and different green speeds than what this is actually rolling at. So you're telling me don't hit it Don't to the hit screen? it to the screen. I mean, ideally, here, let me help you out and kind of show you guys a tip that I do when I'm helping out like my daughter or somebody who's new to it. So it's right to left break. You want to hit it to like, so I'll set this just out. This is just a, one of my little uh, cut pins. You probably want to hit it just so it lands Dead center with that pin right there. Oh, see, you're left and you miss left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to hit it right at that pin. That's a little trick to help where you can do is just use like, you know, if you follow my video for how to put like the cups in your green, you can use the little sticks and mark where you want to hit putts if you're playing for some money and you really want to make sure you make it. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's, that's me and Mel playing a hole. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys, as stated. Um, I think the launch monitor is a really good deal. I mean, at the current posting of this video or today, uh, it's south of $5,000, which makes it the cheapest launch monitor. I shouldn't say cheapest, the most affordable launch monitor um, on the market right now. If you can get over some of the software issues, like the audible noise, which I know they can fix with the software issue. You know, I don't talk to Envisage personally. Carl's was nice enough to send me this unit to test out. Uh, but the launch monitor being a new company, a few software updates, I really think they can have something here. I don't mind that they don't have their own um, software because you can use GS Pro. And again, 250 bucks a year for GS Pro, that's hard to beat. You can play Augusta, most of the courses around you. And there's even designers that you can hire and build out a course right by your house. So really like it, Mel? What do you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah. I know she doesn't like the noise. I'm not a big fan of the noise either or the audible, but again, I think they could fix that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Yes. Bye. Bye.